Welcome to this VetVine evidence-based update in small animal internal medicine. In this segment, we're discussing splenic disease in dogs. When we're wanting to detect splenic disease, we're usually not looking for a disease of the spleen. Usually a dog doesn't walk in and say, hey, there's something wrong with my spleen. Usually we either find it incidentally on our physical exam or by other methods, or we have a disease process such as anemia or thrombocytopenia, and then we look to the spleen to help us get our answers for that. So we can have splenomegaly that's very overt, or it may be occult. One of the other things that often heralds us that there is a splenic disease present is when a dog presents with hemoperitoneum, and this is often secondary to splenic rupture. Most commonly, this would be due to a mangiosarcoma. However, benign processes are associated with hemoperitoneum. Coagulopathies certainly can cause hemoperitoneum, and those can be associated with splenomegaly, so that's very important to make that distinction. And those hematomas that occur when dogs have coagulopathies can appear as masses, and so that is a very, very important distinction. So splenomegaly, again, is oftentimes found incidentally, and that's actually the point of this paper. There, we're looking at incidental splenomegaly. They were not looking at dogs that presented with overt signs that were directly attributable to splenic disease.